Rainbow Six Siege just recently dropped Operation Dread Factor, and with it came the new operator, Finrear. Finrear can be a challenge to learn, especially with how complex his gadget really is. So in today's video, I'll be going in depth and teaching you how to play Finrear. I'll be showing what to bring in his loadout, how to get the most out of his gadget, and what his hardest counters are. So make for sure you watch all the way through to get as much info as possible. Before I tell you how to play Finrear, you first must understand what he brings to the table. Finrear is the seventh trap operator to come into Siege, and he brings a very interesting trap option into the R6 roster. Finrear's gadget is his Dreadmind, which has two different modes. The first is their disable state. When a Finrear gadget is disabled, it is completely bulletproof and can only be destroyed via explosive means. However, when the gadget is activated using Finrear's phone, they will begin to scan for any attackers in their radius. When an attacker walks into said radius, the Dreadmine will begin to fill the area of the trap with fear-inducing gas. This gas obscures the attacker's vision significantly, only allowing them to see a couple of feet in front of them. While they are affected by the fear-inducing gas, they will also have sounds of voices play in their head until the effect subsides. To get rid of this fear effect, they must leave the radius of the gadget and wait a few seconds for the effect to slowly fade, or they can destroy the dread mine outright. By the way, while these mines are active, they are no longer bulletproof meaning that you can shoot a mine if you notice it is active or if you find yourself in its radius. However, due to the lack of visibility you have while the fear gas is affecting you, it will be very difficult to find his traps, but you can give it a try. Now that you understand the gist of what his gadget does, I'll now be going over Fenrir's loadout. He has access to the MP7 SMG and Sausage Shotgun as primary options and the Bailiff and 5.7 USG as secondary options. The MP7 is definitely the primary you should be running. Its fire rate is really high, it has good damage, low recoil, and it has a decent magazine size. The sausage may be a decent shotgun, but since Finrear doesn't have a secondary SMG available, it is hard to justify bringing it over the MP7. As for his secondaries, the Bailiff is the clear option. It provides amazing soft destruction capability, which allows Finrear to provide extra utility to his team. You can use it to open hatches, make head holes, make vertical holes, and create rotates in the bomb site. Now, you can still bring the 5.7 USG, but its damage isn't great and you'd be sacrificing some amazing utility for a below average pistol. His great loadout in combination with his two speed rating allows him to easily rack up kills in any round he is picked in. And his barbed wire, which is the secondary gadget option you should be running, meshes extremely well with his gadget allowing you to slow attackers while they are in the radius of your gadget, or you can use them to provide your team with an audio warning of attackers sneaking into the bomb site. You can get away with running his bulletproof camera. It isn't terrible by any means, but since barbed wire messes so well with his gadget, I'd argue it provides way more utility in 99% of situations. And so for me personally, I think you should be running it over the bulletproof camera any day. Now that you grasp everything that Finrear has at his disposal and what it all does, I can finally answer the question you clicked on the video for. How do you play Finrear? Well, well, first things first, you need to understand when to pick Fenrir. Fenrir is actually an extremely versatile operator due to his gadget being a trap that can, you know, give you intel and also allow you to pick up free kills. And since they don't have many counters other than explosives, it makes them even more versatile. However, one thing that can sway whether Fenrir is an extremely strong operator or just a decent operator is the lineup of the enemy team and their style of attacking. If you notice throughout a game that the attackers have a very aggressive, almost rush style of attack, then Fenrir is the perfect counter to that. If the attackers don't take the time to properly drone, they will find themselves running into your dread mines a lot. And when they do, they will walk right into your trap. But Fenrir isn't only good against aggressive attacks. So you can pretty much run him in any round, and as long as you play him properly, you can get a lot of utility and potential kills out of him. Now, I'm sure you're wondering, how do I play him to get the most out of his gadget? Well, there are a couple of ways to accomplish this. The first is to place his dread mines very high up or to place them in obscure areas like in a bookshelf or under a table. If you do this, the attackers will have a much harder time shooting your mines while they are blinded, meaning that they will last much longer into the round. The biggest mistake to me that even I did when I started was just throwing his gadget on the floor in a room or even above a doorway. These placements are so obvious that an attacker will just immediately look there as soon as they get hit by your trap. Placing them above a doorway isn't a terrible idea, but you want to be taking advantage of the fact that their vision is obscured. If your dread mine placements aren't obvious, they likely won't even see your traps until it's too late. Another catastrophic mistake people make with his gadget is placing them on the other side of the map or in areas where they can't be played off of. 
You need all of your mines to be near where your team is playing so that when they go off, someone can swing and kill the poor attacker. By placing his traps far away, they may give you info on where the attackers are pushing from, but you are missing out on the strongest aspect of his gadget, the fact that they actually blind attackers. The last major mistake I see a lot of Fenrir players making is not disabling their gadget. When an attacker is hit by your Dreadmine, they are immediately going to start looking for it after the Fear Smoke fades. So if you aren't able to swing the attackers before they get outside the radius of your Dreadmine, you should immediately disable it. By doing this, even if the attackers find your trap, they will no longer be able to shoot it, at least until you activate it again. Which, after disabling the mine, you can re-enable it when you know they are within the trap's radius to get additional value. By constantly moving and disabling your activations, it allows your traps to last way longer into a round, and it allows you to get way more value out of each trap. Now, outside of how you should use his traps, how should you position yourself as Fenrir? Should you roam or should you anchor? Well, from my experience playing the operator over the past couple of weeks, I think he works best as a soft anchor. Basically, this means you'd be setting yourself up slightly outside the bomb site near where your dread mines are placed. This will allow you to play off your traps perfectly. For example, a really good place to play him is Library on Chalet. If they come through library windows, they will be blinded and you can kill them pretty much for free. And if they come up library stairs or through fireplace window, they will also be blinded, giving you plenty of time to react. This position puts you in the perfect place to play off your traps and allows you to control one of the strongest parts of the map. You can also have a teammate play on top fireplace to make this position even stronger. There are many more examples of positions like this that are strong for Fenrir. I would recommend just experimenting around with it and trying out new locations so that way you can find your favorite locations to play Fenrir. Now, after everything I just said, you may think that Fenrir is one of the most versatile operators in the game. Now, that isn't necessarily untrue. He can set up the bombsite, provide info to his team, and kill unsuspecting attackers. But Fenrir's biggest downside is that he needs intel for his gadget to function. If Fenrir doesn't know where the attackers are coming from, how is he supposed to know which Dreadmines to activate? This is why in solo queue, I would recommend against using him. Obviously, this does depend on the bomb site, but for the most part, getting intel on where the attackers are pushing from without your teammates giving you calls is going to be very difficult, and relying on randoms to give you those extremely important calls is inconsistent to say the least. So as a typical rule, I would only recommend picking Fenrir in solo queue if you know your randoms are giving good consistent calls. If they aren't, and you pick Fenrir, just expect to get way less out of his gadget. So, in short, when playing Fenrir, during the prep phase you should be using your shotgun to help your team make rotates, head holes, as well as placing your traps in areas where you or your team can play on them. Then throughout the round you should be playing near your traps so that you can take advantage of the intel your gadget provides, and so you can potentially pick up some free kills on blind attackers. I wish you luck in your future ranked games with Fenrir, and I'm sure you'll have some great success. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video, I make Rainbow Six Siege content just like this twice a week, so go subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter if you don't want to miss the next upload. If you want to see more of me, I'll be streaming two hours after this video goes up, so make for sure you go follow me on Twitch to go check that out. If you want to watch another video just like this one, a video will be popping up on your screen right now where I teach you how to play Brava in Rainbow Six Siege. I'll see you next time, friends, and peace.